Hello YouTube, Sandre here. Today I'm gonna debunk a phenomena known as the Paulding Lights, which is showcased supposedly in a video from 2006 uploaded by Robert Vigert or Vigert or however, however the fuck you're supposed to pronounce that name. The video to this day has almost half a million views and the description says, the Paulding Light, also known as the Dog Meadow Lights, have been a mystery in Upper Michigan for over 40 years. To this day, you can see them on almost any night. Personally, I first witnessed this strange light in February of 1999, and to my surprise, the ghost light moved towards us, floating in midair, and it looks exactly as if someone was carrying a lantern. As it started to get closer to us, it would vanish and start all over again, each time moving towards us faster and faster. Sorry, didn't say that last faster loud enough. FASTER! There are some haunting legends for this phenomenon, for example. Some say one night around 40 years ago, a railroad switchman, while holding his lantern, was crushed to death between two cars while trying to signal the engineer. Others say that an engineer was murdered along the old railroad grade that runs parallel to the road the light appears. Another story tells about a man out late one night carrying a lantern looking for his lost little boy in the woods. Supposedly the man was hit by a train and his ghost continues to search for his son. Some people even have claimed to have seen the Grim Reaper floating across the road near the light. Skeptics say it's nothing more than car lights in the distance or glacier gas, but no matter what it is, you are still fascinated and spooked while viewing this bizarre light as it starts walking towards you. I ended up using these clips in my movie by the same name. Alright, so I'm gonna show most of this uh, unedited footage for you, and then I'm gonna give you an explanation of what this actually is. Thank you That's very much. Seeing. No problem. There it is! Oh, this is unbelievable, man. Yeah, go back and talk to battery. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Tony, Tony. Check it out, check it out. Tony, check it out. Oh my god. Whoa. It's getting brighter now. I got a two times lens on it. I'm just saying, you wait till later. I can't wait till Jamie goes down there. Dude, I'm going right now, man. Hey, look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Is it a car from five miles away now? Ooh. It almost looks like a flame, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it yeah. yeah, it looks like a flame out there. Look, it's a red, it's red on it. It's coming real close. Yeah, you see it? It's going red now. Man, yeah, it's, it's, in this camera, it's coming. It, there's three lights now. Like, there's one behind it. And then there's one way, way up there. This one's coming closer every time I look at it. Okay, I just see a red light now. Now it's going fast. No, I see a red light. Drive up later and sit here in your car. Now, one thing that you're going to notice when it comes to this line of power lines, next to this line of power lines, you have a road where cars are driving, you know. You see, there's plenty of valleys in this area of Michigan, especially in the area where Paulding lights have been observed. Now, witnesses usually describe the Paulding lights to be the strongest around summer, and this also makes sense. Because in these valleys, you have a lot of cold air in the beginning of summer. And if you have a very warm day, the hot air is going to rise and get on top of the colder air in these valleys. Now later on in the day, when the sun sets, you have a new layer of cold air being formed on top of this warmer layer. And so what you essentially have is three layers of air in these valleys. You have a cold layer, then a hot layer, and then a cold layer. And this creates what you could call an optical duct. It's basically the same kind of principle behind mirages in deserts or out at sea. This is some pretty basic well-known physics, to be honest. Now, another reason why this is most likely the proper explanation for this phenomena is that off in the distance, in the same direction where these lights are witnessed and recorded, you have a radio tower, which is really tall. And at the top of his tower, you have red blinking lights. 
which is almost always seen alongside the other lights by the witnesses. Now isn't that just one peculiar coincidence? Hmm. So yeah, there's nothing supernatural going on here at all. It's perfectly explainable, and I really don't understand why this phenomena, so to speak, has become uh, a sensation. Although, since it does seem to bring some kind of tourism to this little backyard of Michigan, maybe it's no wonder that the locals pretend to not have a rational explanation for this phenomena. Just saying. Anyway, that's the video. Take care. Bye. There's two lights there. There's two lights. There's there's one behind it. That's because there's a car behind it. There's two cars there. When it comes closer and stuff, when it walks up the hill, you'll see the white light go like this. Okay, I'll let you guys go. Time's it up. Let's go. Is that going in our trunk? Oh, wait, man, this shit is cool. Yeah, go ahead. David, you gotta get there and get the battery charged. You can't see red through there, but you can see the red up there. Hey, just watch, watch, right now that it'll flip it right. Well, I see it. It's just all the way back. No, that's David. That's David. That's David's my one. That's my case. Yeah, give me that. Let's go.